Hello. In this video, I would like to present you the differences of various picosecond laser treatment modalities for skin. Laser, uh, picosecond laser has been uh, uh, picosecond laser has been generated in the recent years, uh, in the promise of that being chromophore independent. The, this chromophore independence is depicted in the first slide, which I want to show you, which shows the different mechanisms of laser tissue interaction. At the longer pulse durations and lower intensities, the, um, the mechanism is mostly thermal. This, uh, at the higher intensities and the shorter pulse durations, the interaction mechanism becomes nonlinear and essentially chromophore independent. And this is this chromophore independence, which is the interesting part which people are driving their technologies towards. We have seen in the recent years a dramatic increase in the number of, uh, of picosecond laser treatment devices. Uh, these were originally designed for tattoo removal, but recently are also being used for the removal of wrinkles and scars. Histologically speaking, we see that these uh, picosecond laser systems, the commercial ones, are currently generating small lesions inside the epidermal layer of the, uh, of the skin, mostly in the pigmented areas. The pigmented areas show micro lesions, and these are typically in literature attributed to the phenomenon of laser-induced optical breakdown. Now, what laser-induced optical breakdown really is, I will come back to later, because it's essential to understand the different mechanisms and how they interact with the skin tissue. Several years ago, before the, and the advent of all these picosecond laser systems, we have generated the first uh, ever high-intensity picosecond laser system for skin treatment. And we've published quite a number of articles on the topic of laser-induced optical breakdown inside skin, as shown by this list of articles that we wrote. The intensity of our laser system, as compared to the current uh, currently available systems, is that it was significantly higher. And as a consequence, we were able to generate lesions not only in the pigmented areas, but specifically also in the deeper layers, for instance, the dermis. And our lesions are significantly larger and are therefore also not isolated to specific uh, superficial layers, but can actually go very deep. We have shown that this creates uh, repeated lesions inside the skin, and we, are, and we have the freedom to target any skin compartment with this technology. Now to come back to laser-induced optical breakdown, what is it really all about? Laser-induced optical breakdown, or LIAP for short, is a mechanism by which high-intensity laser light is creating a so-called multiphoton ionization event. This event is basically a free electron being liberated from a, uh, from a molecule, and this free electron is being accelerated in the electric field of the laser. And by being accelerated, it will collide with the surrounding uh, molecules and free other electrons, which eventually leads to an avalanche of electrons and a so-called laser-induced plasma, which will cause a shock wave in the surrounding medium. At lower intensities and mildly absorbing structures inside the skin, one can have thermionic emission, which basically means that particles with relatively weak absorption will create, will, will rise to a very high temperature, typically like 1500 Kelvin, and in that way create free electrons through thermionic emission. These free electrons can again undergo the avalanche ionization, causing a thermionically initiated laser-induced optical breakdown. At even lower, uh, lower intensities, it can also happen that certain particles, for instance melanosomes inside the skin, will overheat, reaching boiling point of the surrounding tissues, creating microbubbles and microcavitation. Either way, the, all these mechanisms will lead to for some form of tissue ablation. However, the path along which that happens is quite different for the different technologies, and therefore also the target that they actually treat can be quite different. For la la pure laser-induced optical breakdown, the target is uh, a chromophore independent, so you can treat at any arbitrary depth where you can reach sufficient intensity. For the microcavitation driven mechanism, there is the need of an absorbing chromophore, which actually initiates the effect. Now, histologically, there's quite a significant difference in what 
uh, these techniques create. If you look at the left, this is the result that we obtained with our investigational picosecond prototype in the past. You show above, uh, in, the lower, in the upper picture, we see a loose collagen matrix, which after treatment has been strongly densified and much thicker epidermis with significant improvement of the collagen structure. On the right, you see the effect of commercial picosecond devices, which show uh, immunohistochemistry chemistry staining of collagen 3 and show an improvement, a tentative improvement, after three months. We believe that this latter result is not the result of direct laser-induced optical breakdown, as we have shown it in inside dermis, but rather is mediated through triggering of healing responses through the epidermis, probably initiated by the microcavitation itself. Interestingly, by having these technologies new, uh, that can address any particular layer inside skin, there's of course a number of different targets that you can try to, uh, to reach. For instance, you can try to target directly the matrix remodeling, which we've done, but also, also you can try to remove senescent fibroblasts directly, or address mast cells and residual cells related uh, for other resident cell related disorders, or actually try to address sebaceous glands directly. The, in conclusion, this laser-induced optical breakdown is really chromophore independent, if it's the pure multiphoton initiated version of it. And it can generate lesions repeatedly inside dermis tissue at any arbitrary depth inside the dermis. Thank you.